The interest in NOLA stems from the fact that this ship, despite having been wrecked and breaking up a bit on a reef, is still amazingly intact from an archaeological sense. And looking at NOLA was going to give me insights in particular, as well as other archaeologists, into how the ship was built. Despite the fact that the Civil War is a relatively recent period in history, plans and documents that tell the intimate details of blockade runners have been lost. Many of them were built clandestinely, many records were destroyed at the end of the war, and so the only real record we have in many ways is what sits on the bottom. Using the information from the map, Jim will explore every aspect of each section of the wreck. Nola was a Civil War blockade runner that wrecked in Bermuda. What's interesting and fascinating about Nola is not that she's unique. It's the fact that Nola is so representative, so like many other blockade runners. And yet for all those thousands of blockade runner voyages, of the hundreds of blockade runners, very few have survived, particularly as archaeological sites. Nola is unique because exposed on a reef in Bermuda, her hull is largely intact. Yes, it's broken, it's cracked in spots, it's collapsed in others, and yet it's all there, albeit in pieces. As an archaeologist, what I'm interested in is going down and on paper taking all those pieces of the puzzle that are represented by broken pieces of the hull putting it back together and getting a very detailed sense, not only about how this ship looked, but how she was built. That's very important because even for a period as recent as the Civil War, ship plans are rare. In many cases, documents like that are lost or thrown away. And when you consider the fact that NOLA, like so many other blockade runners, was built practically clandestinely to support the Confederacy, it's no surprise that there's very little documentation outside of a few profiles or paintings done really of how these ships look from the outside and at a distance. Before we make any dive, we make a dive plan. All divers do. But what's different about an archaeological dive is that not only are you planning how deep you're going to go, how long you're going to stay, you're also looking at features. What are we going to look at? What are we going to document? How are we going to bring data from the bottom back up to the surface? In my case, that means working with a slate, with mylar paper that I can take notes on or draw on underwater. That is essentially my clipboard, with which I gather information to bring back, because so many times what you find working on the bottom is that, be it the vagaries of the pressure or the excitement of being in the depths, whatever thoughts or observations you have on the bottom, if you don't write them down, down there, for whatever reason, it's like the slate is wiped clean once you come to the surface. Maybe it's some unique part of our physiology when we're at depth. Because of that, I always carry that slate, and throughout the dive, I'm making observations and notes, or sketching the wreck to get the lay, not only of the land, but of the ship itself, so that I can then come back on other dives, or direct other archaeologists to survey in more detail. <laughs> 